Meliko to Sokotobo Rabagashikara Mamama. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. We will bless you, Lord, we worship you. Leko to Sokotobo Rabagashikata Balika Namasikotobo. God bless you, hallelujah, for joining us this hour. Let's just please begin to like the video, invite your families. Those of us here in America now, this is, we're preparing for Thanksgiving. So a lot of people are going to be having some quiet time in the family. Let's come together and begin to like the video, share it. Those of us that have been following for some of us that are out of the country, in Europe, in Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Middle East, everywhere in the world, all the islands, South America. God bless you. Lakiti Sikitiba, Rabagashi Kotobu, Makotorobo Sikitiba. Just bless God for who he is today. Thank him for his mightier than mightiest and his greater than the greatest. He is I am that I am. Ancient of days, Lord, we bless you, we worship you. Hakorobo Sakataba. Zikorobo Likana Mashikataba Likata Sakataba. Makaraba Sokotobu. Makia Bashikataba. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Let the power of God move in me, move in you. Begin to make a name for yourself in our lives, O oh Lord. Show your great and mighty power in our families. Do what no man can do that your name will be glorified. For we worship you, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you for you are God. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. I am that I am ancient of days. Receive all glory and adoration. Receive all honor. Makuto Sokotobu Rikete Shikataba Likata Sakataba. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Lord, today we present ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice, that you look on us with your mercy. The Bible said that we should come to you, O Lord, Father, that also we should present ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. We say this is our reasonable service unto you. Many of us, all of us, the only way we serve is when we have fellowship with you. And it's all good. The Bible said this is our reasonable service. So coming alone is a, is a, is a service to God. God consider it because when you come, you'll be presented unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. As a holocaust, you get burnt on the altar. Lord, we commit our spirit, soul, and body unto thy hand today. Let the spirit of God pass through us. Use us, O Lord, Father. Burn us out. Break us into dimensions and pieces that you want to see. That the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt. We magnify you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. We worship you for you are God. Make a name for yourself in our life. Hakaraba Sokotobo. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for accepting us into thy presence. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God bless you. As we have connected, please just share this on your wall. Like it. Invite your friends. We are talking about the power of fellowship. The Bible says the entrance of the world. Give it light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking now not be an enticing word of a man. But let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The power of fellowship 
You know, we started talking yesterday about added value. Who are you hearing who is speaking to you? What value are they adding to your life? If they're adding, if they're not adding, why are you gonna be continually being depressed or being abused or not stagnating, not having growth in you? The, the, we talked about the law of lead or the law of car, according to John Maxwell, where you have a leader have grown to, they, are, they, are, they, they have a lead upon them that covers them, they can't go past that lead. And every other person that is under their sphere gets to that place and does it. And we talked about as a leader, we have to continue to grow. Today we are moving into another dimension that is a continuation of where we started. Talking about you going to the presence of God continually, consciously, direct, not indirect now, Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth, because the key there is rightly. You know, you can divide the word of truth wrongly. But it's a rightly dividing the word of truth. And the only way you keep the truth afloat is when you continually fellowship with God. By going deep in the word. The Bible says the word of God is the sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. So many of you want to hear from God, read the word of God. It's a sure word of prophecy. It is sure and it's guaranteed. Because as you're looking at it, if you believe the word enough, the Bible says that the word becomes flesh. And that's what God wants to get us to do, to be able to make the word that is written in black and white, to become flesh in our lives and let it begin to dwell in your community, dwell in your family, dwell in your ministry, at your place of work, in the marketplace, at the mall, on the street corner, where you do your business, the world became flesh. And you know what it means. Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a key. Another way God did put that is when God began to speak after the death of Moses, we know how great Moses was with the word and how Moses was always embedded with the things of God. A man that would just disappear into the mountain for 40 days, he will not be out. He will just stay there without food or water or nothing. He enjoys, he comes, the Bible says, God says, come up to the mountain and stay there. And he goes and stays there. And behold, the glory, the glory of God and the beauty of his majesty. But when Moses departed, God had to reassure the next leader. You know, Joshua had taken over because he was there. He knew a lot of things about Moses, but he was also a fighter. He was not in that priest, priestly um lineage but he has to because Iran and his children are gone so what nobody knows much about Moses except Joshua and Caleb the Bible says God came to reassure the children of Israel and Joshua came and told God came and told Joshua that Moses is dead but the way he was with Moses he will be with him but there is something that God made Joshua to understand the continuation of the administration of the children of God and also both the physical and spiritual administration. Even though Joshua will be the head, but God is still their king. God told him something in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, which is also as Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved. God said this book of the law, Every leader, everyone that will be great, the man that God uses, the man that God will use, the man that God will send, the man that God has sent, we have to go back to looking into the world, begin to embed ourselves into the world. The Bible says, God said, now, this is, I'm paraphrasing, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, God said to him, this book of the law shall not depart, not from thy table, not from thy computer, not from your tablet, but from thy mouth. And you have to have read enough of the word to have it in your mouth. 
this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Meditation is you have to think about it. You have to, you have to, in, put, when you are meditating, you are putting everything on hold. It's, you put a lot of thought into it. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Then thou may observe to do. So through the meditation, you begin to do according to all that is written there. That's when the word has become flesh. It is now coming out of thy mouth. The Bible says, out of your mouth shall flow the rivers of living water. You have enough of the word to begin to come out. Then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous and thou shalt have good success. But look at how it began. It began with the fellowship. Thou shalt meditate on the word day and night. This book of the Lord shall not depart, shall not depart. So once we begin to meditate on the word, we are having a koinonia with God, a fellowship. We are in that place of fellowship with the Lord. And get in there and get lost. You will see God manifest as a leader, as a business person, as a father, a mother, as a spinster, a spouse, as a man, that a young man that is about to start life. Meditate on the word. If this is all we talked about today, if you, we can just stay here and understand this, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it, it makes a lot of sense. The Bible said also God was talking to us in the book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. It said, blessed is the man that seated not in the way of sinners or standeth in the way of sinners or seated in the way of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. But in it does he meditate day and night, day and night. That's the key. So once that meditation is involved, there's a fellowship. Then the man begins to be, and he shall be like the tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. And I don't know another way to tell you about the prosperity of life. I'm talking about having life in you, being above the enemy, being physically and spiritually successful is in the world. Do you know how the Bible describes success and prosperity? In third John verse 2, we say, I wish above all things that thou may prosper. Be in hell, even as thy soul prospereth. That is the three angles of prosperity, but you can only find it when you embed yourself in the word of God. Blessed is the man, blessed is the man that seated not in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the way of scoffers, but his delight is in the law, in the word of God. In it does he meditate day and night. Then all these things begin to happen. And he shall be like a tree that is planted. And let me tell you, if you see a man that reads or studies the word of God, they are new every day. I'm telling you, it's just what the Bible said. He shall be like a tree that is planted. By, and sometimes these are people that have no education. And sometimes people don't understand that between the time they met you last and the time that you see them again, that a lot of transformation have gone in. And most times people want to judge you based on where they know you. And sometimes you see people that are preaching or doing the will of God or somebody in great business. And they, you start to say, who is this guy? And they say, oh, he's, I used to know him. He doesn't know anything. How did he become this thing? He has been with God. And many times people want to keep you where they knew you, how they have met you last. But something has transformed in you. There is a real transformation. God has educated you in the way of life. God has educated you in the wisdom that comes from above, that is pure, the one that is peaceable. God has educated you in his everything. And God began to put into you the spirit of counsel, understanding and mind, and the spirit of the fear of God. Now, this person is a different person. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Christ is the word. So when you meditate on the word day and night, you are in him. And when the word becomes flesh in you, ah, labaga, shikotobo, then you are now manifesting himself. All things shall pass away. 
everything shall become new. That's why you see a lot of people that have met God, a lot of people that have stayed with God. We are going to talk about them like Peter and them in the Bible. The Bible said, Ah, Karabashiko Pubulikata Sakataba, Mazoko Toruburikata Shikataba. These guys, they walked with Jesus Christ. And when people saw them, they were wondering, say, these guys, we used to know them. How did they become this great? How did they begin to manifest this great thing? If you look at the book of Acts chapter 2, I just want to go forward, then we'll go back to where we were. Acts chapter 2 verse 7. When they came out, after they had prayed for 50 days, that 50 days they were eating the word. They were praying, they were having fellowship, and they, they were having communication, communion with God. And 50 days after they came out on the day of Pentecost, and began to minister. The Bible says in verse 7 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and they were all amazed and marveled. People saw them say, uh, saying one to another, behold, are not all these men which speak Galileans? Galileans. And they're not people from Galilee. Are these not fishermen? Are these people not illiterate? How did they know? The Bible says in verse 8, and how here we every man in his own tongue where we were born. The people were amazed in the transformation. On that just 50 days, but remember that these guys have be, begun to transform when Jesus was with them. They spent three and a half years with this guy. They spent three and a half years with God. Every day they see the world, they eat with him, they drink with him, they sleep with him, they wake up with him, they go to fellowship, they travel with him. They have been with the world for three and a half years. Now, Jesus has resurrected and God, they have spent another 50 days indoors. These guys came out swinging. They had so much knowledge of everything. They were so vast. That's why if God have called you, it doesn't matter where you were when he called you. If you have great education, it's awesome. But study them all. Don't just do copy and paste. Copy all your experiences in life and all the studies you have known about whatever you have studied and try to bring it, it is not the same. Your experience will help you. The things you have studied will help you to catch up faster, but they are not the same. The ways of God and the ways of men are far, the Bible says, as the heaven is far from the earth, so are my thoughts far from you. Let us go into God as people that have never known anything and let God begin to train us. So God told the man of God, he said, study to show thyself approved. And told Joshua, I said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shall meditate on it day and night. That is the key to advancement. That's the key to fellowship. When you meditate on the word, if you can read the word of God every day of your life, it doesn't matter how great, how long, because some people start to quote, you have to do two chapters in the morning. Three. Forget all that doctrine. There is no pattern, but let God take you at your pace. If you are a slow reader, just go at your pace, but make sure you are understanding what you are reading day and night. You hear the word of God and you read the word and you communicate with God, you pray. You do that for the rest of your life. Let it become a lifestyle, a pattern. Let it be like a religion to you that day, a day will not pass by you don't open the word of God and glance through, and thank God we have tablets and all these things that will help us to just sleep, and you are there. But if you can get a, a real Bible, it's still, it's never old. God is ancient and modern. Hallelujah. The Bible says, so when you come out now, when you say somebody's blessed, they are blessed for real. Because the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat of the food thereof. You have the capacity and the ability now to begin to shape people's life in the right direction. If God have given you one person, two, three, is it people that are your children that you, you give birth to? Your, people that are born in your house, maybe you are servant, you can shape their life because you have been with God. Are you in a business? environment, you are the CEO, you are you are the manager, you have one or two people that are with you, or even you are you are serving, you can be the source of life in that business. We have seen people that were brought, people like Daniel, were brought in, into, into the house of the king as slaves, but they took them to the school of the childers. 
in Daniel chapter one, the Bible said Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnego, when they came out, because these guys have, you know, when you are when you are under siege or like you are when you are in prison. I was, I'm going to tell you a little bit of story if I can remember it now about some people that went to China to do ministry work and they discovered something. But these guys went in while they were teaching them the, the way of the negative supernatural to be able to get the star and get into the charges to understand mysticism and the supernatural ability. These guys were studying the word of God. They were eating the Torah as food. By the time they came out, the Bible said that they were 10 times better than the people that taught them in the, in the mystics of, 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 of the Babylonians. They understood more than their teachers 10 times. Study to show thyself approved. That's why they monitored Daniel. In the later time of his life, they wondered how, what level of wisdom and understanding does this man have? And they discovered that he opens his window at a certain time and faces towards Jerusalem and he prays from there. And they went and connived with the king. And they lobbied the king to make a law. The king didn't know that it was Daniel because he loved Daniel. And they made a law that any other person that would do that will be thrown into the den of the lion. And Daniel was caught and, and judged because the king has signed in it. The king didn't want to go against his own word. Because in those days, the word of the king is like the word of God. The, the, the king, even if you, they cannot just change their mind. It's, it's not in the position of the king to just wake up and change their mind. And the king was praying for Daniel. Daniel went into that den. And in fact, the moment he came in there, because he has fasted so much that everything that stayed around him stopped to eat. Then the lions went into fasting. And then by the next morning, when they brought him out, the king was asking him, did your Lord, did your God save you? But what am I saying? The power of fellowship. We're having a great fellowship with the almighty God. Having great fellowship with the deity. The almighty God, the oracle. Our God is a spirit. And then that must serve him, must serve him in truth and spirit. Then you come out, if you say something that, that the, 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 you, you speak life, life comes. You bring death. The Bible says death and life. We don't even want to go there. But that both of them will be in your tongue. Both of them. Arakata si kotobo. Maziki tereba likanama mama. Yabagashi kotobo likakasaka. That's why Jesus gave us this illustration in Matthew 25. If you read from verse 14, talking about the man that was traveling to a far country and called his servant, three of them, and gave them talent. The Bible said in verse 15, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Matthew 25, you look at verse 15. And the Bible says he went on this journey. The guy that will have five talents, we know the rest of the story, went and traded with Luke at verse 16. Hey, you know, many times God have called some of us and we say, oh, I heard from God and God called me. Yes, God called you. But there is a process of becoming. You have to go and begin to understand the things that will make up your ordinations and the things that will make up what God has called you to do. Your assignment. There are people that have gone ahead of you. Find a mentor. Read, study, go into the word of God. So the man in the Bible said that the guy that had five talents didn't just rush out. He began to train with it. He began to study about the business, began to do something. The business began to grow. And the one with two talents did the same. But the guy that had one talent, the Bible said he took it and went and hid it. He never did anything because he thought he, he was wise, saying that the man was a mean man. But if you look at the end, which... That's not where we are really focusing on. We try to focus on the people that succeeded. We knew what happened to the guy with one talent. It was taken away from him and given to the guy that has multiplied his talent eight times two. Five to 10, God gave him one more, it becomes 11 talent. The guy that have to have multiplied to four. And they, they say, come, I will put you in charge of many things. Because they went in and did the work. It's not enough to hear from God. It's not enough to be called by God. Some of us were even called before you were born and you will hear prophecies and prophecies. But the key is to go and know what is God saying to you today. How it has God updated your assignments. Don't go with the revelation of 20 years ago. 
Sometimes they have been outdated. You need to update your system. The new version of you, God called you 20 years ago. What is the version of you that is supposed to operate now? I remember when Jacob was born, he was ordained to be great and greater than his brother before they were born. But when he was born and he discovered he was the second child, he didn't know the, proph the prophecies that had gone ahead of him. He was always in this competition trying to become Esau. We know the rest of the story, how he tried to steal the blessings of Esau. And he ran away and wasted 20 years in exile in the, in the house of Laban. But fast forward, until Jacob went and had a what we call a fellowship with God, that night in Bethel, he couldn't have become. There was a heart-to-heart -heart fellowship. There was a, 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 a sober reflection, a going back, a breaking down, a broken spirit. Jacob came. He has done everything to break forth in life. But it's like there was a big weight upon him. Jacob was still living in the past. And his, his new version has gone further. Until he said, who are you? He said, I am Jacob. Whoa. Of all of a sudden, he remembered who he was. All these years, he has tried to become Esau. And it's almost in, impossible. That's why I tell you sometimes, don't, don't be in a hurry to, to try to be like somebody. The best of somebody you can be is a photocopy. Be yourself. People can be your mentor. Look onto them. Learn from them. But don't be like them. Come out with your version with what you have learned from them, to put what you know, it will be totally different. Let God begin to transform you and make you the original of yourself. But that day Jacob became himself. Say, I am Jacob. And the angel told him, as a prince, you have wrestled with God and man and you have prevailed. Now he was updated to the Jacob, the prince, that God has called him before he was born. But as long as he was saying, I'm Esau, he can never be anybody. Even though the blessing was made for Jacob, but the blessing cannot rest upon him because he did not know who he was. That's why many of you have to go and think, rethink and find out what did God call me to do? How did he give me this assignment? Let the breakdown be given. Find out the pattern and build according to pattern. Don't deviate from it to the right or to the left. There must be fellowship. The power of fellowship is so powerful. Hallelujah. Makaraba shikotobo, likata sakataba. So we must eat this bread. It's a daily thing. If you look at Matthew chapter 6, Jesus began to say in verse 9, and he said, If when you pray, pray in this manner, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. But there's something he said, the next verse is, give us this day our daily bread. You must have fellowship with God every day. You must have a glance of the word of God. You must put your face in the word. Even if it's a verse, two, three, four, five verses, day and night, you begin to behold. Let that word come into you and begin to transform you. There's something about reading the word. The Bible says the word of God is the sure word of prophecy. As you begin to behold the word day and night, day and night, before you know it, you become like that word. In fact, there's a saying in English language that whatever you do conditionally, constantly, consciously, every day for 21 days becomes a character. Just 21 days, your body will be tuned to that. Try this and see. You will have the drive to go into the word of God. If Maybe when you begin, it's not going to be easy, but try it. Every morning you try to glance in, even though if it's one chapter or two, if you can't go as much as you can, you say your prayers and you leave. You come back in the evening, you do that day and night. Do it day and night. Before you know it, your body will begin to make room for that because nobody all has time or chance. We only create time. If you want the time to align for everything to work, you get up in the morning, oh, I'm already late. No. If you call this, if this is important because the value you place on anything in life will determine the virtue that will come out of it. Once you begin to place value in the things of God, place value in God that you serve, then you see God re reciprocate. And what you receive will be different. We are talking about the power of fellowship. So Jesus told the devil, when the devil was tempting him, I was trying to show him, saying, you, you can turn these stones to bread. Ah, 
Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, and Jesus answered and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word. The word of God is very important. If you cannot get it anywhere, get it from the Bible. The, the Bible says the word of God is the sure word of prophecy. Look into it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of God. Every word. The key is, what is the word for me today? Just go in and say, God, give me a word. Open the word of God and look at it. Glance through the Old and the New Testament. Meditate on the word as you are doing your business, as you are going out, doing your job, working in your establishment, looking for a job, finding a career, being a housewife, being a father. Whatever you do, driving the bus, driving an airplane, look into the word. Day and night. There is something that ignites in your spirit as you do that. Something will begin to give way and something will begin to give into you. Your body will begin to form in that. Let it be a habit, a pattern. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceeds, that proceeds, every word that comes out, every word that is proceeding out of man. That is what you live on. Oh, Magasakataba. God bless you. Hallelujah. Le kata shikotobo li kana mamama. Mazika karabari koto shokotobo. Rabaga sikataba li kana mashikataba. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Luke 21 verse 15. As you begin to study the word, as you begin to meditate on the word, as you begin to hear the word, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing but the word of God. Your faith will be built up. You are growing in faith. You are beginning to add muscles. Your spiritual man is beginning to get tougher. You start to overlook things that are around you. You start to see the challenges that are in your life that they are, they are not anything. They are not even as big as you used to think. Your life will begin to go into another direction. Your mentality and your method will begin to change because your method now, your mentality is your method. When you begin to go into the word of God, your mentality will change and your method will change. Because your mental picture is your actual future. What are you seeing every day? You can meditate on the word day and night. Then the word of God, according to Luke 21 verse 15, will be now accessible and visible for you. Because you can now, the Bible says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom. So now you will get some some ability to speak, a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries, not some of them, shall not be able to gain, say, or resist. Go and find God. I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries, all your adversaries, all your distractors, all your enemies, all the people against you, shall not be able to gain sin or resist. By this time, you have, you, have, you have seen God. I'm telling you, go and find God and men will begin to find you. Hallelujah. I will give you a mouth and wisdom. You see somebody that is a fool and you know them to be a fool and they used to be a fool. All of a sudden, <coughs> their level of smartness will be something else. Excuse me. They will be so smart and the way they, they, they understand things and begin to figure out complex issues and begin to dissect them and come out with a great answer or Solution, you'll be wondering how, who taught them this thing? It's God. If you have been with God long enough, you there's no way you'll not be wise. It's, there's no way, it's not, it's not possible that wisdom will not come. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversaries, all, not of some of them, shall not be able to gain say or resist you. you. But you must be a man, a woman that understands fellowship, that know how to have communion with God, how to have fellowship, communion with him, how to be able to mingle with the spirit. 
a man of the spirit, your enemy cannot dare say or resist you. First John chapter 1, verse 19. The Bible says, if we confess, that is when this word of God will be possible now. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, which is forgiveness, I told you, is always easy. On the cross, he just stood there and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God forgave the world, or just on the cross. So when you get to the cross, it's easy to get forgiveness of sin. But look at something else. I want you to see something now. And to cleanse. The cleansing now, sometimes it takes a while for God to finally cleanse us. But that is what it takes. God will begin to, in the process of cleaning, God is putting things in the house. Many of you are being trained while God is cleaning you up and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That, we read it and it just looks simple, but it takes some time, it takes some people two, three years for God to finish cleaning them up and bringing out a perfect man. I beseech you, brethren, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, for this is your reasonable service. Once you present your body, God is the one that will burn the sacrifice and bring you on the other side. You will still be alive. A living sacrifice. He shall cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what happened to Peter and them. These guys were just fishermen that were by the backside of the city. You know how fishermen are? These are generational families that have been doing fishing, many of them, actually. But after being with Jesus three and a half years and they waited for 50 days in that upper room, they came out. The Jews could not know them anymore. People began to say, ah, Likataba, Rabo Gushakataba. Are these not Galileans? Are these not people that used to do fishing? How come they, the Bible said they were amazed and marveled in the level of wisdom, understanding that these men have. Some of you have, people have been surprised when they hear you talk. Maybe people you went to high school with, people you went to college with, and they used to know you that you are not that high in putting words together. But now, because you have been with God, if a man, a woman, a person have been with God, the, 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 the evidence is what they have become. Their temperament, everything will change. The way they will become so polished, how young and fresh they look. Because the Bible said, if you meditate on it day and night, thou shalt be as a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in a season. That means in every season you are fruitful. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever it does shall prosper. It doesn't matter whether you are standing on the road selling something by the corner of the road. That business will always attract the highs and the lows. Because we are a light. Everywhere you are, the Bible says, arise, shine for thy light. You can be a bus driver. You can be an Uber driver. You can be somebody working in service business in the restaurant. It doesn't matter. Go and eat and be with the world. Whatever you do shall prosper. Then if you are doing something that is so great, because you will be the best everywhere you go. The Bible says, and God prospered Joseph in the prison. In the house of Potiphar, God prospered him so much that even the wife of Potiphar left the husband that was governor and was eyeing the servants. Because this guy is a bunch of wisdom. He is full of blessings. Everything that comes around him comes alive, begins to turn to gold. So these guys were with Jesus, Acts 2, 7 and 8. They, everybody started to look at them and say, wow, what happened? What level of transformation has gone into these people? These are fishermen, these are Galileans. How did they just become this, these people that have command of the world? They have, they have um, oratory, not just only earlier, they have power because they were manifesting some dimensions of authority. People were being healed, they were transforming lives. That is your portion. But the way to that is the power of fellowship. We have to fellowship with God daily and then you start to come out as refined and polished and God will present you to the world as his bride the Bible says study to show thyself approved a workman that did not to be ashamed dividing the word of truth rightly not just dividing any word but rightly dividing the word of truth 
Say, call upon me, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I will hear and answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. Have fellowship with God. Let us go in back into fellowship. Day and night, go into the presence of God. Just at least every morning we come and knock on the door of heaven and we sit down there. God told Moses, come up to the mountain and stay there. We go there and we stay. In the morning, it doesn't matter what I say, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, as the Lord gives you, but walk in your pace. Don't say this man of God is doing 30 hours. Half. No, everybody has their own way. Go and stay with God based on what level you are with him. And God is the one that will now help you to go. Allow the spirit of God to begin to use you, to begin to mature you. Because every child of God must get to a place of sonship, a place of maturity, because sons are the ones that the inheritance are for. You cannot give inheritance to children. It doesn't matter whether you come as a child, but don't stay as a child. Grow up to the place of maturity. Are you a mother? And your children are not doing well. They are not in the things that you want them to be. God can transform the whole of your family, including your husband. Are you a husband? So it doesn't matter. I'm not talking to pastors only. Pastors, yeah, it's great. But if you are just somebody there that just want to go by every day on earth, you don't know how to navigate the world. The key is to meditate on the world day and night. Go to the presence of God. Let there be a communion with you and God. Fellowship with him. Have some level of intimacy. Let the, let the spirit of God begin to massage you and break you in pieces and bring you a refined person. So he can present you as a bride that he can have what we call wedding or marriage with. Oh, Rabagashi Kataba, Makoto Sakataba. I remember when God called Abraham, Genesis 12, said, get out, and he got out. And one unique thing about Abraham was the guy believes everything. But you can see it in Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says, and the, he was, he was, he was, he was counted righteous just for believing. God said, get out. He got out and began to move. And in everything God asked him to do, he does not look back. When he sent his son Ishmael away, Isaac was left. God came back and said, circumcise yourself and every male in your household. He did. Genesis 17. As Abraham caught everybody, all the male people, including himself. By this time, Abraham was very, very old. Hallelujah. When he did that circumcision in Genesis chapter 17, if you look at verse 10, the Bible says, God said, This is the covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every child among you shall be circumcised. And God will begin to go in verse 11, and you shall circumcise the flesh of, the, of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Hallelujah. And Abraham did. For generations, everybody has to do that. But do you know what it means for this man, 99 years of old, sitting down there and caught himself? But what happened? Genesis 22 was the climax. God said, now he had Isaac. Isaac was growing. Isaac probably is a young teenager, about 16 or 17 years, very young man. Very full of age. And God said, go to the land of Moriah and kill him there. Abraham was a man of fellowship. He doesn't care whatever voice is saying. He heard the voice of God and that voice he will obey. That's where we begin to have this intimacy with God in the place of fellowship. You go in there and God will speak to you and give you directives and directions and you follow it to the teeth. We know the rest of the story. When he did, God said, no, no, no. As he was about to kill his son, God called him from that place and said, Abraham, do not touch the lad. For now that I know that you thou feared the Lord. Why would God just know that time that this man feared him? Hallelujah. For now I know that thou feared, some transition say, for now I know that thou loved me. And God began to repeat what he has said, that in blessing, I will bless you. And everyone that costs you is already cursed. And God began to bless his generation and his seed and began to bless and bless the blessings of God. And God swore by himself. The Bible says, God said, I swear by myself that in blessing, I will bless you. 
and any man that costs you is already cursed. But it must get to that place where everything God said in your life is supreme. You don't question him. You just do it. That's where you begin to rent your garment. Joel chapter 2, 13, the Bible says, rent your heart and not your garment. Your heart will be torn for God. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow in anger and of great kindness. And repent him of the evil. Rend your heart. Let your heart be torn apart. David put it this way, Psalm 51 verse 17. He said, thy sacrifice is a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O Lord, thou will not despise. So God spoke to Joel and said, rend thy, your heart and not your garments. So in those days, some people, when they are fasting, they will put on tattered clothes and they don't comb their hair, they don't shave, they don't brush, brush their teeth, they just come out so that people can see them and know that, no, God said, you still look good, but rend your heart, let your heart be torn for me. How many of us will circumcise themselves? I'm not talking about literally cutting yourself like what God told Abraham, but it is also that way. And God says, circumcise yourself. You purge everything about you. You circumcise your heart, circumcise your soul, circumcise your being just because God has said that. That's when you begin to hear his voice. My sheep shall hear my voice. The voice of strangers they will not hear and they shall follow me. That's what Jesus said. Let's get back to fellowship. As we are coming out of COVID, thank God there's a vaccine. We can see the end is near. But right now we have to take all the precautions and the, the necessary measures. But let me tell you something. It will not be church as usual. We are coming out swinging. We are coming out with great aura and power. The Paul said the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. We are coming out believing God absolutely where we can start to say, I stand in the word of God and I decree and declare this shall be and it shall come to pass. When you begin to believe God extremely, let us begin to become extreme believers again. Why people have not yielded to the will of God because they have not seen our attitude. Let me tell you, your attitude will determine your altitude in life. Our attitude towards the things of God have to be absolute. Let it be like a cult. I'm telling you, if you see people that are in the dark side, when whatever is asked of them or required, they do it. I saw some people with my wife the other day in the mall, walking in America barefooted, tying some clothes with different colors, shaved their hair, every part of them was shaved. They were just like, um, I don't know what we call it. This, you can see that these are spiritual people. They were walking in the mall, in a public place. And people were looking at them, but they are proud of what they are doing. How many Christians can do that? We have to get back to the place that if whatever God says is supreme in life. Oh, like, and it can only happen when we have had enough fellowship. Thou shalt meditate on the word day and night. Then thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. Until the word becomes flesh in us. The word has to become flesh. It must become flesh. And the word became flesh and dwell in them. As we read and meditate, that thing we are seeing, we begin to behold it and begin to turn into that thing that we translate into the word. Where God will say that you are blessed and you'll be blessed for real. The wisdom of God will be transferred from the book into your life that you come out wise. The Bible says, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. Do you know what it means to behold God in the morning and evening? This is the wisdom that the technology that created the heaven and the earth. And you are looking at it every day. Do you know what level of maturity and wisdom you will have after you have been with God every day? Let's say for a year or so. And you are doing this, it becomes a lifestyle for the rest of your life. You don't miss it. You just It doesn't matter whether you are on the air or in the land. You are with God. Ah, likata, sakata, man. And the word became flesh. John chapter 1, 14. And dwell among us, and, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That word has to become 
has to be made flesh. It must become flesh in you. It must become alive. That is when God will begin to give you the secrets. Psalm 25, 14, the Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his confidence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Oh, lakatasakataba. After we have fellowship with him, then you will be bold to tell somebody about Christ. We will not be ashamed. We are not going to. Every child of God is called to be an evangelist. That is our commission. That's what the Bible called the Great Commission. Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. I will draw men. John chapter 12, 32. If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. We can't proclaim him if we have not met him. That's why I say, when you find God, men will find you. Go and find God in that marriage. Find God in that business. Find God in that study. Find God in your ministry. When you find God, men will begin to locate you. Let it not be the God somebody told us. Let it be the God that we have been with. The Lord God we have heard of and now we have known him. The things that those things that we have heard and we have beheld. Now we have, our hands have touched it. We have seen it. Ah, likata sakataba. Bazoko toromobobo. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. Let us pray. Do you know what it means to behold God every day? That's when you start to receive grace. I want us to pray with the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. The Bible says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet he, for your sake, for my sake, he became poor. That he, through his poverty, might be rich. Oh, we are talking about the wealth of the heavens and the earth. The galaxies, the atmosphere, everywhere is in him. So he has given it to us. So Christ took our errors so that we can have his righteousness. He took our errors. He took our sins. He took it and gave us his righteousness. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was that grace, let us pray. Ask God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to come upon you right now. From the crowns of your head to the sole of your foot. Let the grace come upon your life, come upon your family, come upon your children, come upon you. Rabo Gusakataba. Let the grace come now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake, for my sake, for our sake, he became poor. Lord, that, that through his poverty, we shall be made rich. Lord, let the wisdom of heaven come upon us. The Bible said, you shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. Let the grace come upon us now. The wisdom to succeed. When we talk about rich, it, you, you are going to be succeed in everything. Health-wise, you will not be sick. Sickness cannot be found around you when that grace is upon your family. Spirit of vagabond, your children will not be outlaws. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it now, Bakaraba. As you are praying that prayer, ask God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to come upon you. Let his grace come upon your family. Let it come upon your children, upon your ministry, upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Makereba Shakataba. Jesus said, Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Matthew 12, 42, the last sentence. A greater than Solomon. So if you have met Jesus, if you have met him through the word, if you read about him, if you study the word every day, you will have the wisdom that is above the one of Solomon. Do you know what it means? Solomon was an epitome of excellence. He was the symbol of administration. He was a symbol of organization. Solomon was all of the above. And God said, the greater than Solomon is here. Are you ready to come in the excellency of his majesty? To be great and greater than Solomon. That wisdom that God gave Solomon can be yours now. 
The wealth, we are not talking about the riches. Ah, the kata sakutumu. Makataraba, Jesus said, people are not coming. A greater than Solomon is here. Ah, the kataraba sakutumu. Receive that knowledge. The wisdom that is from above. Let it come unto you now. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. Ah, in the name of John chapter 3, verse 31. He that cometh from above. Let the wisdom that comes from above, the one that is pure, false, the one that is peaceable, let it come upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And last but not the least, the prayer we're going to pray. Psalm 112, 102. And I'm going to just speak into your life. The Bible says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. You are a man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. I speak this word unto you, verse 2. Your seed shall be mighty upon this earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Your generation shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, it says, wealth and riches shall be in your house. And his righteousness endures forever. Upon the upright, there shall arise light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. Wealth and riches shall be in your life, shall be in your house, shall it be in your business, shall be in everything that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, your seed shall be mighty, your children shall be mighty here on earth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, your generation and generations after you shall be blessed. Receive it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As I pray with those of you that want to be saved, all these things will be possible if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you confess Jesus Christ and believe that he died and resurrected for our sins, we shall be saved. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Congratulations. God bless you. Look for a Bible-believing church. Fuse yourself in there. Write to us if you need to be mentored, to be trained, to be empowered in any way. We will give you materials. We will help to mentor you. But find a local church where you are, a man of God, a woman of God, a place that you can be trained, a place that you can be poured into. I want you to go. Congratulations again. Write to us and let us share of your testimony. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Have a great day.